African drums are talking. Over miles of veld and jungle, the weird throbbing of the drums beats through the tropical night. Drums made of hollow logs with skin stretched tightly over one end. Sometimes, human skin. Village after village takes up the message to send it booming farther into the night. Searching for a lost tribe, spoken of by the natives as the Golden Race, Professor Anton Edwards, together with his daughter Lorna and his assistant Jack Martin, are in the wilds of French Equatorial Africa. The professor has come into possession of a preserved human head that talks. He believes it to hold the secret of lost Atlantis. Lorna was found wandering in a trance a mile from camp. They suspect it is the work of a local witch doctor. The professor, carrying the only gun, is walking ahead with Nguru, a native prince, while Jack, carrying Lorna, is straggling in the rear. Almost within reach of camp, two lions appear on the trail, cutting the girl and boy off from the others. The animals pause a moment, then charge. Run, Lorna. Run to that tree, quickly. No, Jack, I won't leave you. Run, for heaven's sake, go. Are you mad, girl? Run. No, Jack, I won't. It's too late now. They're on us. Yes, sir. We're all right. At least I think so. What happened? I don't know exactly. Those shots, they were... They were from a heavy rifle. At least the first two were. You two children all right? Tell me what happened. I don't know rightly. But those lions, who shot them? I haven't the faintest idea. When I ran back, one of them was thrashing about, badly hit, so I finished him. The other was stretched out dead. Well, at all events, there's someone around here who doesn't want us killed. What do you make of it, sir? Oh... Please take me back to camp. I, I feel rather shaky. Well, of course. I'll, I'll take her back, Jack. You can tell me what happened as we walk. Nguru, fetch the boys to skin the lions. Aye, Buana. We'd better have the skins brought into camp. Are you all right, Lorna? Yes, Father. I'm all right. I'm shaken up a bit in my nervous system, but that's all. What happened after I left you to follow me back to camp? Well, I guess we lagged behind a little. I'd forgotten all about those two lions being near. And suddenly they came into a patch of moonlight and stood staring at us. Jack pointed out a tree and told me to run for it, Father, but I was so frightened I couldn't move. That's not right. The fact is, Lorna wouldn't take the only tree within reach. There wasn't time for both of us to climb it. Hmm. Nice time to get squeamish about politeness, I must say. I might have lost the both of you because of it. Well, uh, then what? Well, then they charged, and they got mighty close, and a rifle seemed to speak out of nowhere. The firing came from our right. I saw the flashes plainly. Yes, so did I. From a bunch of high scrub. But who in the name of... No native could shoot like that. When the porters hear of this, they'll certainly think we're bewitched. Now that I can think more clearly, it sounded like a heavy automatic. Yes, and evidently he must have had luminous sights. A white man, all right. Well, we have a guardian angel anyhow. Oh, that campfire looks good. I'm frozen through. You know, I think you'd better take a dose of quinine, Lorna, and go to bed. Oh... Well, I'll take the quinine, but I don't want to go to bed. I wouldn't sleep anyhow. I see those awful lions coming at me all the time. Get my coat from the tent, will you, Jack? I want to stay by the fire a while. All right. Uh, Can you dig down into your memory, my dear, and recall anything about the earlier happenings of the night? You mean before you found me out there? Yes. No, Father, it's all a blank. But it might come back. That feeling of something mentally drawing me into the bush is completely gone now. Here you are, Lorna. Oh, thanks, Jack. Now you two go on into the tent. I know you want to talk shop. I'll join you in a little while. Now, wait a minute, young lady. You didn't think you were getting out of that dose of quinine, did you? Oh, here it is. Of course you would. (laughs) Oh, I hate the awful stuff. Well, a necessary evil in Africa, my dear. It sort of keeps the moths and bugs away, you know? Well, here's to the man with the rifle. Oh, dreadful stuff. <laughs> now both of you run along. Uh, come on, Jack. I want to compare notes with you. I've been wondering, sir. Did you do right in having the lion skins brought here? 
They really belong to the other fellow, you know. Well, that's the reason I wanted them here. In the hope that he'd come and make a claim. Oh, I see. And Guru went out to the boys, didn't he? Yeah. They ought to be back soon. Yes. You see, Jack, the man who shot those lions is the same fellow whose tracks we saw join Lorna's when she was walking in that trance. At least it looks like it. But why didn't he make himself known to us? What's his game? He must have the natives under his thumb or he wouldn't be able to keep his presence around here a secret. Oh, well, that's true. I understand a little about drum talk, but I... I haven't heard one of them beat out the symbol for white man except in relation to us. It's got me worried. We'll have to break camp the first thing in the morning. Mm. Oh, here's Nguro. Buana. Nene Nguro. My Zungro's devil, devil, na bigger Simba. Mm. What's that? He says it was the white man's good devil that killed the lions. Well, that's a good idea. You tell Chenzi boys, Nguro, eh? Uh-huh. Supporters think we have such a proficient good devil working for us, we'll probably have a little less trouble with them. Well, that's a relief. I hope that thought takes root. All right, Nguro. Get some sleep, what? Huh? Aye, bueno. Here, Jack. Take a look at this map. I want to go over some details with you. At present, we're over here, about 20 miles from the Bacari River. Oh, by the way, perhaps... Perhaps you're too tired to go over this now, eh? You had a pretty bad scare tonight. Oh, I'm all right, sir. I've been charged by lions before. But then it was I who was holding the rifle and not someone else. <laughs> oh, hello, Lorna. How do you feel now? Oh, fine, thanks, Dad. I think that scare shook my brain up a bit. Well, did you manage to remember anything? Anything that could help us? Not a thing, Father. There's only one thought in my head now, and that's to start traveling and keep going. Hmm. Well, you're likely to get your wish. We're going to start at daybreak. Listen. The drums have started. Must be something important. What are they saying, Father? Well, if you'll only be quiet for a minute, I'll tell you. Great Scott. Something wrong, sir? No. No, there's nothing wrong. Except that they know we're going on safari in the morning. What? Pete's sake, how do they know that? We've only just this moment spoken of it. Are you sure that's the message, sir? Yes, listen. This is what they're saying. White. Hawks. Take. Wing. Fly. North. Sun up. Hmm. White hawks take wing and fly north at sunrise, eh? And they even know the direction we're going to. Evidently. I don't like that white hawk part of it. Oh, well, that's nothing unusual. It's the way they have always designated the white man. It's uh, just a drum name. They've stopped. Hmm. Yes. Now we'll be expected all along the line of march. The drums to the north have probably taken it up and are relaying it. There's something very mysterious about all this. Oh, yes, I know. If I didn't have such convincing proof of what I'm after... I'd be tempted to get back to the coast. But I can't, Jack. The talking head has practically given me my line of march. Oh, that ghastly thing again. Which way are we going, Father? Just a little west of due north. And we have to pass over some bad country. The ground's all new to me. Will we uh, touch Lake Chad? No, we'll pass to the east of it. And from then on, we can expect no protection, whatever. Oh, why is that? Well, I have permission to trek around these parts as far as Chad. But north of that, we'll be going into uh, Touareg country. And the French won't guarantee anything. In fact, they won't give me permission to go in there. So we'll have to sneak in. Then there will be no need to touch any place where they're likely to question us? No, no. We have supplies for an indefinite period. That is, providing we can shoot meat for the porters. Yes, they won't work without meat. And when we get past Lake Chad, we can send the porters back and use camels. They're surly beasts, but as long as you keep them hobbled, you know you've got them. Drums have started again. Yeah. yeah, so they have. Laura, I think you better get dressed for traveling. It'll be daylight soon, and there are heaps of things I want you to attend to before then. So, uh, hurry, dear, will you? Oh, of course I will. That's what I want, something definite. Mm. To do. All right, off you go then. Uh, Jack, we've got to move fast. The drum that's talking is a snake drum. Well, 
What does that mean? We killed a sacred python tonight, didn't we? Yes, worse luck. Well, I didn't think there were any snake worshippers so far up country. Evidently, I was wrong. The sect may be very small, but they're after us. By daylight, they'll be howling madly around here because we killed one of their gods. Well, that you and Guru? I, Buana. Guru, come. Savvy snake, Juju drum. Oh. Him which Dr. Plenty mad for lava, huh? Break camp and make trail as fast as you can, Guru. We don't want a fight on our hands. Man, Guru, no, you snake woman for wab for lava. No, no, you bloodthirsty old ruffian. Go on now and get out of here. Apana. Look for the Shanzi boys. Plenty Kazi. Aye, Buana. He'll attend to the porters, Jack. But I do believe I saw him grin at the thought of a fight. <laughs> Guru would rather fight than run any time. Well, I hope it doesn't come to a fight for Lorna's sake. My stuff hasn't been unpacked, so I'm ready to move at a moment's notice. Well, that's good. We've got to put some ground between us and those birds before they can organize, or we'll have a mob of yelling, bloodthirsty savages right on our heels. Well, how long before they can get together, do you think? It's all according to how far the sect is spread out. They'll gather around the priests and witch doctors for some instructions first. Then they'll hold a few rites to work themselves up into a fighting mood. But, good heavens, sir. Listen to that thing, boy. The talking head, Jack. Listen. It's warning us. Warning us against some impending danger. Go and stand by law in case something happens. I'm going to help him, Guru. Hey! 